The Port of Brownsville is crucial in making sure the Valley gets goods to and from other areas of the country. In this week's Throwback Thursday, we learned about the shipbreaking operation that took in military vessels at the Port of Brownsville, impacting American history forever. We're at the Port of Brownsville today, and there is a beautiful story that, uh, one of the many beautiful stories that take in what has transpired over the past 50 years, in particular, at the Port of Brownsville. The subject matter that we're going to cover today is on ship breaking. Now, the dismantling of ships, the salvage operation that goes with ships, was not even here, not even thought of, say, prior to about uh, 1967, 68. In the aftermath of Hurricane Beulah, there was a man that came down from the Northeast by the name of Richard Jaros. He is literally the father of what you would call ship breaking, ship dismantling in the port of Brownsville. Now, I normally report on old 19th century vessels, the wooden vessels that either went down in by sinking or by fire in warfare. But this is a different category entirely. This is 20th century. We're talking about metal ships, all kinds of vessels of every kind that are salvaged. There again, you're getting into the recent cycling of the metals. The citizens of Brownsville and tourists throughout the area for the past 50 years have had a sight as they were going out towards Port Isabel, South Padre Island, that was astounding. They would look over to one side and they would see an aircraft carrier from the U.S. Navy or a destroyer, destroyer escorts, missile uh, firing vessels and that type of thing anchored at the Port of Brownsville. These vessels came out of, more than anything, a fleet that was in storage for what you call mothballs by the U.S. Navy after the Second World War. The shipbreaking operation that took in military vessels that were here was not the first brush that uh, Port of Brownsville had with the U.S. military. Upon the opening of the port in 1936, shortly afterwards, at the beginning of World War II, 1941, there was a huge operation here in the manufacturing of destroyer escorts, minesweepers, and barges for the U.S. military. Richard Jaros came down to this part of the country, and he saw the potential here. I remember it back in the late 60s. You had the basic turning basin here, then you had the shrimp harbor that's up the way, and that was basically it. There was a lot of vacant land. Richard Jaros saw this land and he said, we can do something with this in a productive industrial manner. He went back to the forces that be within his organization and said, can we do a shipbreaking operation here in South Texas? And it was agreed upon. You not only had a shipbreaking operation, which was the largest in the country at that time, there were five five independent operators going on simultaneously. The dismantling of ships here, strategically in South Texas, made sense because the labor was abundant here. It was quality labor, and also you had a direct rail to Monterey, and that was the direct customer for all of the salvage that came out of this port. The classic vessels that have been seen from by outsiders from the highway here and in the interior of the port would have been aircraft carriers on the level of the Saratoga, destroyers like you have on the Des Moines, and all kinds of other Navy support vessels that were here ready for dismantling. Beyond that, there were commercial merchant marine ships that were here. One of the most notable was the hospital ship USS Hope. Jaros's installation here actually expanded beyond the shipbreaking function into ship modification, ship fabrication, and auto salvage operations. One of the key points that has to be pointed out here was the selling factor that Jaros went to his people in the north Northwest and said, the workers here are first class. One would think that after a lifetime in this industry, one would be surrounded by those accoutrements that uh, actually brought back the memories of those decades of involvement. As Mr. Jaros says, each one of these items, and this is only a fraction of them, tells a story. There's a tremendous, long, interesting story behind every item here. In his years, in his decades of involvement in shipbreaking, Mr. Jaros has been involved with over 500 vessels. Now, the current level of U.S. military vessels on the books is 480. So he had involvement with more vessels at present than the U.S. military presently has. The mind of a visionary to bring this type of industry to Brownsville to support those many people over the years and those families with a solid base for commerce in the Port of Brownsville is commendable. And the rest is history. For KVEO News, I'm Eugene Fernandez.